Hey everybody, welcome to Trading Capital's Daily Analysis video. I'm your head market analyst jumping into the charts on this July 14th. What a wild, wild day today. Overall, the sentiment that I had heading into today's market session was the fact that we were likely going to see upside. Now, the reason why the markets gap down here um, in the pre-market action is simply because of one single factor. The PPI came in higher than expected and it has not cooled down yet. So this begs the question that potentially we have not seen peak inflation yet and potentially the CPI can still reflect next month yet again even a higher number simply on the reason that the PPI is generally a leading indicator for the CPI. So we really have to take that into account and I think that's what the markets briefly did. Now there's also options X to consider. Tomorrow is Friday where I think it's estimated between 1, 1 to 2 trillion changes hands in, in options. So in the short term many stocks can get manipulated and that's why we're kind of seeing the markets have been struggling all day the major indices but they have rallied back impressively from the lows. So that tells me that there are buyers waiting and I do think the markets kind of expected a higher PPI and a higher CPI and it's already priced in and due to the fact that we gap down and we've actually recaptured that gap this morning and the markets are trying to go positive the S&P is just down on the day slightly but you are seeing signs of strength in the big cap tech sector you know today banks are weak which is why the S&P is weaker as well as the IWM and energy is also weak so when we flip to the Nasdaq the QQQ the Nasdaq actually went positive on the day today which is very very impressive to see which is just outlining the fact that it is kind of flipping more to a risk off scenario where tech should get that bounce and we'll discuss why I think tech is going to get that bounce but pretty impressive move this was your pre-market trading gap down on the PPI numbers and then you had a little bit of chop and sold off made lower lows and then you pretty much came into um, you know some good support zone over here but you did make a new low over here on the chart intraday action but you recaptured this gap on an impressive two, you know, move a surge up here, consolidation, and then a secondary surge. So now for the bullish aspect, we really want to see a close above this gap. If we can hold this gap, it shows that, you know, that little bit of a panic sell, a freak out was mainly money that wasn't prepared for that. And now smarter money, the people that are, are prepared and have positioned them correct on the correct side of inflation are ready to carry this market potentially a little bit higher. I do think that there's a strong chance we eventually come up to fill this gap around the 385 mark, but we'll just have to continue to wait and see. I mean, it's it's hard to put a determination on what the price action is likely going to do, especially hitting into a Friday where options X is going to be the predominant force up until the closing bell. So let's just continue to wait and see, but it is impressive that we have rallied substantially off the lows on the S&P. What was looking for more of a horrific day across the sector has turned out to be some signs of strength in, in, in plays that we're actually holding. But overall, let's take a look at the QQQ. Um, the NASDAQ has uh, turned positive on the day. If we flip to the intraday chart, you can see it also had a slight gap down this morning, not as big as the S&P because the S&P is weighted in banks and energy as this is just the big cap tech 100. So overall, the, uh, the Nasdaq has recaptured and gone positive. You can clearly see you're into these little um, areas of resistance over here, which is I'll just draw a, a trend line across just to show you just like that. So clearly there is resistance there. And we'll just have to continue to see if we can push higher on the NASDAQ. I do think we can. I think doing the fact that the US dollar is starting to put in more distribution signs, I do think that there's potentially a downward consolidation period for maybe a uh, you know three to six week period for the US dollar that it could find some sort of reprieve for the indices as that US dollar slightly weakens the indices, the more risk off assets can start to see some more money flow. If we flip to the daily chart on the NASDAQ here, you can see that we've been flirting with this resistance line. It has kept you in check over here, over here, 
over here and now with yesterday's candle you managed to close down below but sorry I'll, re I'll rephrase that you fell down below intraday but managed to rally up and close right on that trend line today again it looked like you're going to close below you made a new uh, intraday low compared to yesterday's candle but you've actually recaptured that and engulfed this candle so on a bullish basis if the Nasdaq can close above the yesterday's closing high that is technically a very very short-term bullish signal that the big cap tech is likely to continue to see further upside in the markets and if we simply analyze Apple we can see on the daily chart you have broken out short term temporarily from this trend line. I don't think the breakout will last very long. There is a key gap fill that I'm watching. Let me just turn off this volume. There's a key gap fill that I'm watching here on the spiders up around this 150 level. And then if you simply flip to the intraday channel where I think Apple may run into some resistance before going up to this 150 is you have an intraday gap over here around the 149 and change level. And when you actually take a little bit of a parallel channel analysis approach you can see that we are going to have resistance look at that look at this beautiful parallel channel connecting this pivot a little bit of a pivot over here pivot over here pivot over here you almost kissed it there so that gap fill around here is going to coincide with the top end of this channel and you should see some sort of a resistance pullback once you hit that level now the secondary gap is not that far away so there is a chance that you can blow through this resistance channel but up until you do that you kind of have to respect the channel as a as a big level of resistance so let's just continue to see how Apple performs obviously it is showing pretty decent strength on the day um, but overall where we will look to short Apple around this 151 mark um, I was hoping to play Apple as a day trade for this gap fill short if it came straight into it, but now it's going to be closing too close to it. So whenever a price action closes very close to a technical level or just shy of it, that level changes from a more of a major level to a minor level. And that's certainly what this intraday gap is going to be. It's going to be more of a minor level. And then you will find a little bit more of a major level at this gap fill. And then we'll just have to monitor and assess where we think the Apple is likely going to head after that. If we flip to the um, DXY and why I think um, the equities, the risk off equities are catching a bit of a bounce. Is if we flip to the monthly chart, beautiful, beautiful level that we were showing and displaying on our charts. Look at this trend line. You have these monthly pivots over here one two and you have this pivot top over here three and look what you just hit today coinciding with this longer term parallel channel that we've been chopping in for since 2005 really so that's an pretty impressive channel uh, you have to respect long-term channels like that especially when the dollar has had this parabolic move right into a resistance line and it's almost had a measured move from this low over here to this high to this low over here to this high it actually could see a little bit more upside but I do think you consolidate this downwards before potentially moving up in another leg in the dollar and we'll just have to see you know it's a good question to ask is what is going to take down the dollar and what is going to propel the dollar well at this point in time it's really difficult to say what is going to take down the dollar I mean the only thing that I can really think of in my opinion is central bank policy if they pivot and become more accommodative and that usually occurs when unemployment upticks but what can keep supporting the dollar strength is well the falling Europe they're heading into a recession you know the euro dollar parity um, seeing some sort of a um, one to one basis in a very very long time you have Japan printing exceptional amounts of money just destroying their currency and when you compare the DXY the DXY doesn't include the ruble in it if it include the ruble the DXY picture and chart would look a whole lot different but the DXY only um, compares the G7 countries and when all of the other G7 countries are weaker than the US due to them being stuck in Europe being pinched from an energy supply from Russia the war recessions the US dollar is obviously going to have superior strength as those countries go through a lot more turmoil than the US but we 
need let we can't forget though the US doesn't just have 30 trillion in domestic debt and national debt they actually have i believe 120 trillion in in total debt so those are the federal reserve's outstanding liabilities and the reason that they have been able to borrow and outsource their inflation to the rest of the world is simply the fact that they have the largest economy in the world and generally on a historical basis whoever yields whoever wields the strongest economy generally has the highest probability of repaying their debts and let's just say that economy starts shrinking at a rate faster than the world anticipates that reserve and dollar homogeny could be threatened as people start to calculate better returns by holding other forms of investments rather than the biggest liability in the world which is the US dollar as we speak so I think if, if it'll be interesting to see if the DXY closes in three hours inside these two candles if it does I do think we have a definitive short-term cycle top in around that three to six range and then if it does close in and around that range I think it's fair to assume that we could see a retrace back to this 103 level now it won't be a straight shot there but it certainly would be you know maybe over a three to six week period we could see a nice four percent decline in the US dollar which would start to lift commodities which would start to lift gold which would start to lift copper which would start to lift oil which would start to lift natural gas obviously a stronger dollar hurts commodities because most of the commodity transactions in the world happens in, and they're settled in, in dollar transactions. So a stronger dollar is typically very negative for commodities and that's why we've seen copper, gold, silver, all of these commodities, lumber being hit so hard is you just simply look at this parabolic move in the US dollar and that's what will give you the clear picture as to why it's sold off so drastically. So speaking about commodities, let's flip to oil. Beautiful job on covering our oil short today. We sold our SCO for a lovely 18.24%. Let me just pull up the SCO chart just so we can show you. So we bought in around this 24.05 mark and we sold it at the 28.42 up here. What a terrific sell. Look at that reversal in oil. Simply if we, we banked over 18% on that trade and we've rinsed and repeated uh, basically, we caught oil in this cycle. We caught oil in this cycle, and we've caught oil in this cycle. We've played the SEO three times from this bottom, and if oil retraces enough, you bet I'm going to play it again. And I do think oil has the ability to retrace if we simultaneously see that sell-off in the U.S. dollar. So congratulations on that trade. That's our third time in you know about a month span that we've banked double-digit return on SEO in the energy trades we also covered our VLO so let's just go over the VLO trade over here we banked another beautiful 15.2 percent and look at this reversal we could have squeezed another couple percent out of it but we're now closing above our cover point and that is just tremendously awesome to see I remember we shorted up here you know we banked a nice profit over here we shorted again over here we've banked a lovely profit over here and like I said same thing with oil if we get that retrace look for another short alert for me to issue so typically I will short oil again if it retraces back to this area again that's kind of where I'm looking for a retrace if I were to get back into the oil play so again could it happen it absolutely could bounce back to that hundred dollar level hundred and three dollar level because if that commodity the or if the US dollar starts falling it will provide more of a tailwind for commodities like oil instead of a headwind natural gas was interesting I was so close to pulling the trigger my short level was this uh, 695 level or a pierce of 695 um, one of the reasons I wanted to short there is you have this old resistance trend line connecting your pivot in 2018 to a pivot over here in 2021 and I think we should get a retrace back to that original support zone which would now be your resistance so I'm just gonna be patient we did get inventories natural gas was higher on the day here but again because of a stronger dollar natural gas has been feeling some pressure but it is showing better relative strength in comparison to the other commodities so we may get that push up if that US dollar continues to weaken and if we observe um, Today the inventories came out for natural gas so it wasn't really a market shocker but there was some whipsaw action and again it is really difficult to find the trajectory of where these commodities are going especially since we are in an options X week. Let's take a look at gold. 
um, since we've touched base on the US dollar, obviously with the US dollar starting to um, form, the interesting price action on gold, there's still two hours left on this candle, but the interesting thing to note is that we did make that bottoming tail yesterday on gold, and you did have a nasty flush due to a surge in the US dollar earlier on the day, and the dollar has pulled back, but overall it looks to be that you're gonna close with inside that bottoming tail, so that is still technically holding true, if it closes inside of that wick within the next two hours. So you still see that you're at major support levels. Uh, we did do a few things around gold plays today. We picked up the GDX. Let me just show you the GDX. GDX is magnificent and generally the miners lead the metals, but look at this beautiful bottoming tail on GDX. You know, a, 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 sub, a sublime reversal. We pretty much neared the nail bottom, the near bottom at 2493. One of the reasons I wanted to pick this up is you've had a near identical move from this high to this high matches up with this high to this high. It's pretty much a near perfect measured move. You have come into major resistance. So you have this trend line connecting this pivot to this pivot over here, this pivot over here. If you flip to the weekly chart, what's even more impressive is you're on this beautiful six, one, two, three, four, five, six week time count to the downside. And again, you have this massive massive parallel channel of support that connects um, your pivot over here in 2011 your pivot over here in 2012 a pivot high over here in 2016 a whole bunch of chop before breaking out you know, from this COVID impulse move and look what you pretty much hit today a near tag on that trend line it's a thing of beauty. I do think we're going to get a big bounce in the metals. It's probably going to coincide with the US dollar. And if you notice that how we're playing this is we're essentially shorting the dollar by going long these uh, GDX metals and and variety of other plays. And I do think that it's certainly safer to go with these plays as opposed to say oil, which are is so much more elevated in comparison to these uh, gold miners who are making a lot of money at a price of you know seventeen hundred dollar gold right now so I think in the short term the metals will get that boost it should get a boost uh, you know all I'm looking for a move all the way at the minimum to this twenty eight dollar level and we could see a move into this down sloping trend line you know it is down sloping so anywhere between twenty eight to thirty bucks could be a somewhat of a, a decent move for us to take profits in uh, let's see what else we had on the agenda. We bought Halliburton. We are shorting FFIE again. We did bank on that uh, last week. Uh, we added to our FCX. We added to Zoom. We added to NTR. Um, so notice what today's theme was. We actually started buying um, many equities and starting to accumulate more of a long position because I do think, I mean, when you simply look at like, if you understand how much money and money flow it takes for this US dollar to continue a surge like this. That is a tremendous amount since the start of the year here in January 94 to about 109 and change. That is an exceptional move and it really puts pressure on the overall equities and that's why we haven't been able to establish a meaningful bounce in the equities because money has been flowing into the US dollar and it takes an astronomical amount of dollars to move the DXY. So I am in the camp that we're seeing distribution happen now. A small pullback will light a fire under the indices, definitely will. Um, if we take a look at so let's just take a look at Freeport McMoran FCX. So we added to our FCX today a second add to our position. We're sitting at roughly 2604. One of the reasons I wanted to add here um, at this 2493 level is you're right into this pivot high, this impulse move to the upside, this pivot over here, and you are finding some support. You are technically oversold in the short term. Could you move lower? Yeah, you absolutely could. But I'm in the camp that since you've seen uh, and Freeport's again a, a huge copper play. So we're going to be mining that leverage that I believe with the declining dollar. Um, the reason why Freeport has felt fallen so much is copper has fallen so much and copper has fallen so much because it's the most used base metal in the world. And it's also correlated to a, 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 a strong dollar means a weak copper and a weak dollar means a strong copper. So that certainly should get a massive bounce in my opinion if um, 
if we get uh, a falling dollar, even you know two, three, or four percent, should send these stocks up to our target levels and net us some beautiful gains. Uh, let's just take a look at. Um, so if we take a look at the U.S. 10-year yield, you are getting this broadening formation um, that is typically a bearish pattern of consolidation. Now that being said, it's hard to pinpoint when exactly it will break this megaphone pattern. At some point it will break it. Technically it favors a break to the downside, um, but we'll just have to continue to monitor that. I do think with inflation still running higher than expected, uh, we can't be so bearish on yields falling too quickly because certainly our central bankers aren't going to be that bearish that fast. Um, I think this will coincide with more of a later move into the end of the year when we can start to see potentially a, a topping formation starting to break to the downside. But we'll continue to monitor this. I mean, I don't want to call this a head and shoulders. There has been a little bit of chatter, you know, people watching for this left shoulder over here, this head, this little mini right shoulder. To me, that's too small of a right shoulder. You would really need to see a little bit more of a rounding formation, take you back up to 3% and then start to roll over. But you do have a defined neckline. I mean, if you can get the shoulder to round over another one to two weeks of price action, then you can arguably say that it is a um, more of a uh, head and shoulders formation that could be in play. And obviously, it's a very technical pattern that if it breaks the neckline, we need to be on watch certainly for that. So we'll just continue to monitor yields. Uh, the interesting thing is, is that if you look at the 10 year and then you look at say IEF, our bond play, obviously they're inverse. So if we do get that um, that move, that, that head and shoulders formation on the US 10 year, then our IEF play should display this inverse head and shoulders, which would, if you were to calculate, um, if something like that did break out, we would most likely have a move in yields up around, you know, say to this 110 level, so 6% or say, and if it was on the UBT, which we also have exposure to, you're looking at a measured move to the 39. So that's even a, more of a substantial move because it is a, a levered play to the 20 year yield. That's it for today. We'll continue to cover more charts. I just want to let you guys know that I am going on vacation starting uh, next Saturday. So Saturday is coming up on the 16th. And my vacation, I may not have the best um, Wi-Fi. I certainly won't be having any of my screens. I'll have you know, an iPad, a laptop, and my phones. But uh, in terms of how the Wi-Fi is up where I'm heading, up a little bit north, um, I, I can't really rely on high execution, high frequency trading. Uh, that being said, we are positioned more on the short side of the market, so I'm not too concerned about anything getting away from us, you know, due to the fact that the overall macro trend is down. But just be aware that uh, my alerts won't be as sharp as they usually are. I'm still going to try to monitor at least, you know, the 9 to 11 time frame where typically most of the volume takes place. I know we are heading into earnings but I should be back for more of the important ones. But uh, that being said, uh, there won't be as many, there won't be any daily analysis videos for one whole week. So you guys will be flying blind. I'll try to make posts, but I'm really going to be at the mercy of the Wi-Fi connection there, just due to the fact that uh, I am going to be spending a week on an island where there's not much, uh, um, you know, cell phone reception or not the best cell phone reception. So I just want to provide that little bit of an update. But before I head out, I'll try to summarize and, and anticipate what we're going to expect during the week. Obviously, with earnings, anything is possible and unpredictable. So uh, that being said, our portfolio is semi neutral, but more favored to the short side. So there's not really anything. If there was a certain crash where I was away that I didn't know about, you know, we would certainly still be okay in a healthy position. Uh, that being said, please give this video a like down below and a comment. Thank you all for being members and subscribers. We'll see you tomorrow. Options X, be ready for the volatility 